What's up you guys, welcome back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I am Gold Pounding out the new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube. And today we are in the brand new 2024 BMW X7, courtesy of Apple BMW in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so we are in this one today because it has a twin power turbo V8, obviously. Not only that, the second I got in this one, I was kind of surprised on how much awesome tech I was looking at. We'll get more into that in the video. Video, but ultimately the question I want to lend to you guys put it in the comments section at the end of this video let me know this or the Mercedes-Benz GLS but ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering for a ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing so msrp for the 2024 x7 m60i will start at one hundred eight thousand seven hundred dollars price as tested in the one that i was driving in this video goes for one hundred twenty four thousand three hundred thirty five dollars but when it comes to the power plant that is going to be powered by a 4.4 liter twin power turbocharged v8 putting out 523 horsepower at 5500 rpm 553 pound feet of torque coming in at 1800 rpm that power being sent to all four wheels through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters and launch control zero to 60 time is going to come in at approximately 4.5 seconds top speed 155 miles per hour with mpg numbers coming in at 16 in the city 21 on the highway taking premium unleaded fuel and so before we segue over into the acceleration test here i wanted to mention to you guys there are some drive modes there's eco pro comfort and sport adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response and the steering sensitivity as well as some suspension suspension settings actually as well. So before we do this acceleration test, I did want to mention one thing for the first 300 miles on the X7 M60i, acceleration is essentially limited. It kind of limits your RPM so you can't go high up in the RPM band. So keep that in mind during this acceleration, it was still plenty quick, but not as quick as it otherwise would have been if we were past the 300 mile mark. But anyways, all right, this looks like a good straightaway here in three, two, one, go. We're in sport mode. Ooh, that sound. <laughs> it's fun. That is fun. Definitely not going to have any issues emerging onto the highway. I cannot wait for the exhaust clip later in this video because it's sport mode. I can instantly tell the exhaust valves are opened up. So this is going to be a heck of an exhaust clip, which is odd because we're in an SUV, but still it should be fun. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So when it comes to the braking setup of this one, four-wheel ventilated disc brakes do come standard. M Sport brakes also coming standard with that M logo found on those blue calipers. Definitely pretty cool there. And so as far as braking feel goes, since there's nobody behind us here, let's... Yeah, that's great. Honestly, I was a little bit worried for a little bit because this is an SUV and sometimes with SUVs, you don't have the firmest braking field. It's a little bit soft, but honestly, in a car like the X7, since we have an M version at least, the braking is definitely on the firmer side of things. Instantly brings you to a stop, so 100% not gonna have any issues there. But then, touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're gonna get a double wishbone type front suspension. In the back, lightweight multi-link integral rear suspension, but also, Rear active steering, I wanted to mention that to you guys. That's something I typically see on a, like a Maybach or a, an S-Class, so that was pretty cool. It's gonna assist you with doing U-turns and things like that, but also my favorite, a two axle self-leveling air suspension. So this is gonna be adjusted based on the drive mode that you put in, but there is also a manually adjustable toggle switch that you can use to raise and lower it. And we'll get more into that later because there's actually other ways you could raise and lower that suspension for different purposes as well so as far as ride quality goes honestly that that's what first surprised me about this thing i could tell instantly when i started driving the x7 this was an extremely smooth ride quality which i didn't quite expect because this is more of a performance oriented suv so i knew it was going to be fast i knew it was going to be fun but i didn't know it was going to be super comfortable as well in terms of ride quality so that was one of the first things that impressed me. So ride quality is 100% on point. As far as cabin noise goes, we're going 40 miles per hour right now. There is literally nothing. Really the only interior kind of cabin noise that you get is that beautiful exhaust note, which is kind of amplified when you put it in sport driving mode. But then when you put it back in comfort or the, the Eco Pro mode, it's almost gone. So honestly, cabin noise is very much so on the luxurious side of things as expected in a $125,000 SUV, of course. But as far as steering feel goes, 
Uh, one thing I always say with BMW is the 10 and 2 grips are absolutely mammoth. So I want to mention that first. I love the grips on this thing, definitely on the thicker side of things, which personally for me gives me that better feeling of being in control of this thing. But the steering feel is definitely adjustable dependent upon the drive mode that you put it in. So if I put it in comfort, it still kind of tends to lean on the heavier side of things but it's definitely looser than if I were to put it in sport driving mode and it instantly firms up that steering feel. It's a much heavier weight to the steering. So definitely a fan of the steering feel in the sport driving mode, but quite honestly, even in comfort, it is not bad at all. So huge fan of the steering feel in this thing, but then touching on visibility, I can see 100% perfectly fine out the back. And honestly, due to the shape of the X7, you really shouldn't have any issues with rear visibility. So that is definitely perfectly fine. And since we have that third row down, it's really excellent. Honestly, if you're not using the third row, it's 100% perfectly fine. I'll have to see what the third row looks like a little bit later in the video, but looks great to me. Also rain sensing, windshield wipers does come standard of course for the x7 meaning whenever the bmw detects any kind of missed or rainfall it's going to automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you so just one last thing you got to worry about kind of like automatic headlights and lastly i want to touch on forward visibility a little bit here i am looking at a head-up display it is super bright it is super wide it is colorful as well and it is projecting my speed speed limit and of course it's going to project safety features up on my windshield as well so better helps to keep your eyes on the road so that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 BMW X7. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 BMW X7 M60i. So let's go ahead and start with where this one is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the number five, indicating that the X7 is built and assembled here in the US, at least for US customers, I should say. But let's go ahead and start up front. Full LED headlights do come standard with LED daytime running lights. Do you get the automatic feature with that, meaning when it starts to get dark and at night, headlights will turn on automatically for you there also automatic high beam so if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams then when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams then for you headlights are going to be located below the daytime running lights by the way it's kind of the new trendy thing to do for automakers so i did want to emphasize that but my very favorite part on the exterior of this particular x7 that we have on this one is we do have the optional crystal headlights they go for 2100 dollars but if you look at kind of the LED daytime running lights, it's really the daytime running lights, but if you look at them, they really do look like crystals within the housings of those headlights. So definitely a very cool look. And again, $2,100 if you wanted that, but massive air intakes in the bottom corners there that definitely looks good and they're functional, of course. And front and center, you will find that active kidney front grill, meaning it is gonna open and close the shutters dependent upon the engine cooling that is needed at any given time, but it is actually also illuminated with the M logo found in the kind of upper portion there as well so that about rounds out the front end of the x7 let's now go ahead and make our way to the side and so starting up top gloss black roof rails coming standard gloss black window surrounds rear privacy glass gloss black accenting found at the bottom portion of those doors as well taking a look at the side mirrors there are gloss pack power adjustable side mirrors they will be heated with led integrated turn signals and of course they are power folding as well as expected at this price point. Take a look at the wheel setup, 22 inch M55 spoke light alloy wheels coming standard, but I will say there are 21 and 23 inch alloys available for a little more customization or personalization if you wanted to go that route, but all different wheel setups coming standard with run flat tires. So a little bit of peace of mind there as well. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the back, all the way to the top, body colored shark fin antenna, rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that, rear window white LED active taillights and I love the design to these taillights definitely put a lot of attention to detail in these rear taillights here so I was a big fan of course you can find gloss black accents in the back as well to tie in together with everything else on the exterior there is a trailer hitch available for six hundred dollars we have that option so I wanted to mention that and just below it all integrated dual exhaust outlets with quad tips I love how they're integrated into the rear bumper I always say that but Having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip.
And so now since we are around to the back of the X7, there are several different ways to go ahead and open that rear tailgate. There is a button on the key fob, of course, but ultimately it is a power tailgate for both upper and lower portions of that tailgate. And yes, there are two portions of that tailgate. It doesn't all open up. It also folds down as well. But my favorite part was there was actually a button on the tailgate where you can lower the rear of the X7 to make for easier loading access. So if you perhaps are a little shorter of an individual, this is definitely going to help you out big time. But ultimately, it's going to help everyone out because it is going to help you load groceries or perhaps heavy items that you want to put back there as well. You don't have to lift it as high. So I was actually a big fan of that. But anyways, once it opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 48.6 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, of course, the rear seats do fold down with a total capacity of 90.4 cubic feet, which is actually a good bed. That's more than uh, non-luxury SUVs. I guess you could say like the Palisade, the Pilot, the Highlander, things like that. So just slightly more. So that was pretty cool. LED cargo lighting can be found back there. I love all the carpeted finish in the back as well. It's very high end. Buttons to fold down the rear seats can be found in that cargo area as well. You do have a 12 volt power outlet and if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you will find some in-floor storage then as well and so then make your way up to the third row legroom 33.3 inches which is actually decent for a third row legroom for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i have back there first thing i noticed though is there was kind of like these indentations for where your knees would be in that third row so it actually made for an acceptable third row legroom uh for my six foot self believe it or not so rear ventilation does come standard for all three rows i love that five zone climate control goes for eight hundred dollars if you wanted that and that was pretty cool because there's actually a little climate control section for found on the roof for the third row passengers specifically so they could set their own temperatures. Thought that was pretty darn cool, but also for those third row passengers, of course they got rear cup holders. There's some ambient lighting for the third row as well. And they have their own third row power moonroof. That is something you hardly ever see. So love that. But now let's go ahead and make our way up to the second row legroom that comes in at 37.6 inches. For reference, I mean even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. Of course, my very favorite part of the second row seats is the the fluffy pillows that acted as headrests for those second row passengers. They probably literally could take a nap in that second row. The second row headrests are more comfortable than the first row headrests. Not that the first row was bad, but second row, incredibly comfortable pillows there. Power adjustable rear sunshades do come standard. You also have second row captain's chairs for $850 if you wanted to go that route. Heated second row seats are available. USB charging ports, of course. Cup holders are going to be found on the floor, and there are some additional USB charging ports on the back side of the front seats then actually as well they're kind of hidden so i like that but to make our way up to the front seats merino leather finish with several different color options so i liked that power adjustable front seats with power lumbar of course heated and ventilated front seats multi-contour front seats i always like those and of course memory settings do come standard as well but overall seating was 100% super comfortable on my test drive that I had in this one. So absolutely BMW crushed it with the seat comfort here. Then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is power adjustable, by the way. So that was pretty nice. Leather wrapped. You got the M logo at the bottom and it is going to be heated then as well. But then making our way to the startup, let me start by showing you guys the key. This is kind of a different key. I like it. So of course, lock and unlock. You got the button to pop the rear tailgate there. There is a remote start that comes standard, but it ultimately is all keyless entry with a push button button start so all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button and so once started up 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster does come standard speedometers on your left tachometers on your right and it does change the gauge cluster that is it does change depending upon the drive mode that you put it in pretty substantially actually sport mode gives you a much sportier look to the gauges and uh, I actually just like I like the normal mode because I think that had uh, the tan color that looks the best and not only that there's that head-up display that also changes changes depended upon the drive mode that you put it in so that's like your second pair of gauges on the windshield but I definitely like both setups there but then make our way to overall interior quality a panoramic sunroof does come standard Alcantara headliner also coming standard but we actually have the executive package which goes for $2,100 it gives you several things but one of those things being a sky lounge LED roof so at night that is going to kind of illuminate slightly in the ambient lighting color that you choose so I thought that was pretty cool universal 
garage door opener does come standard. Also illuminated aluminum door sills. Say that five times fast. I like those. Illuminated M badging found above the glove box. That was super unique. I'd never seen that in a BMW before, but that's going to adjust dependent upon the ambient lighting color that you use as well. By the way, multicolor ambient lighting does come standard. The ambient lighting was amazing, by the way. There was actually hidden ambient lighting kind of within the speaker covers as well. So behind the aluminum speaker covers, you had the ambient lighting there too. So that was really, really cool. I've never seen that before. Several wood trim options available. You got heated and cooled cup holders. You got glass controls. Glass controls, by the way, that's an option for 650 bucks, but I love that as well. It matches our crystal headlights. So definitely interior quality was just about the best you can get. It was wonderful. I don't think anything can top that quite honestly. So big fan. So then making our way to the infotainment screen here, you are looking at a 14.9 inch color touchscreen display, Bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, factory navigation system as well. And by the way, I did say it was touchscreen, but there is a circular dial and buttons. You can also control it that way. And uh, it's voice activated, of course, as well. You can check out your drive modes up there. There's gesture control where you can turn up and down the radio with your finger and a couple other gestures as well. Ambient lighting settings, of course, and your radio information. Get ready for this one, you guys. 16 speaker Harman Kardon sound system does come standard, which honestly, that sounds amazing. But we actually had the optional 20 speaker Bowers and Wilkins diamond surround sound system that goes for 3,400 bucks. That gives you 1,500 watts. That's a heck of a lot of wattage. Most car systems come with like 220 to 300 watts or 400, but 1,500, yeah, that's what this one gives you. And we did have that Bowers and Wilkins sound system with us in this video. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. I am going to turn on the radio and let's test out this Bowers and Wilkins sound system that we had in this one. All right, that sound system was absolutely insane. Ton of bass, plenty of clarity. And I've said this about Bowers and Wilkins before. They are one of my favorite sound systems without a doubt. They absolutely crush it in Volvo. They crush it in BMW. They have aluminum speaker covers. Behind the speaker covers, you got freaking colorful ambient lighting where you can pick the colors. Like this is an insane setup for a sound system in any vehicle, that, let alone the BMW X7. So that, that was wonderful. Bowers and Wilkins, you did a wonderful job. And so the last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the X7 in reverse, you will find a rear view camera, but not just that, a 360 degree monitor with multiple angles as well, which is always, it's going to lead us into safety. And so front side, side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, parking assistant, parking sensors, frontal collision warning, lane departure warning, speed limit recognition then, as well so ultimately when it comes to my final thoughts here the x7 excellent tech great interior quality really it's brilliant interior quality very smooth ride as well i love the adjustable air suspension not just for the uh on-road modes but also for unloading and loading the cargo area i thought that was amazing love the glass controls love the crystal headlights really the only thing i could think of in terms of constructive criticism is that this thing is dang expensive. So $125,000 basically, that is a that is a good bit of money. But honestly, if you're looking into the X7, maybe it doesn't matter all that much to you, but it is definitely a very nice SUV. So let me know what you guys think of the BMW X7 in the comment section below. And so with that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in a new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold